Hello, I'm Jonathan Freebert. I run Microsoft's Voices for Innovation program, or VFI for short. VFI is a community of Microsoft partners, technology professionals, and everyday citizens who want to see technology and innovation advance. We believe a robust technology sector is good for consumers and businesses of all sizes. VFI provides timely information to our members so they can stay on top of key public policy issues impacting the tech sector as a whole or their businesses directly. We also make it easy for you to have your voice heard. We provide a platform for engagement so members can connect with elected officials and decision makers to bring their perspective to the discussion. We all benefit when our nation's tech policies are developed with input from both technology professionals and citizens like VFI members. Any level of participation is welcome, whether you want to just stay informed through our webinars or sign petitions or connect directly with your lawmakers, we make it easy to engage. And hopefully, you'll find it rewarding both as a business leader and a citizen. VFI is a free program, so we invite you to join us. Visit www.voicesforinnovation.org to learn more and sign up. Thank you. We are very excited today to have with us David Cuddy and Mary Snap, two experts who are going to talk to you about what Microsoft is doing for cloud privacy, cloud security, and in particular to ensure that your customer's data is both protected and secure. I'm David Cuddy with Microsoft, and here we have uh, Corporate Vice President and Deputy General Counsel, Mary Snap. Mary, Hello. welcome. Thank you. We're here today to talk about privacy and trust in the cloud. Uh, but first, we want to say thank you to VFI for having us today. So Mary, Microsoft's been talking a lot lately about privacy and trust in the cloud. How long has Microsoft been thinking about these issues? Is this a new thing? It's not a new thing at all. We've mm -hmm. been thinking about privacy and trust in the cloud from the very beginning of the days when we started thinking about the internet 25 or so years ago when we talked about privacy and security starting with the launch a way long time ago of MSN. And at that time, Bill Gates was very clear that if we were going to have customers trust in our technology, we needed to be sure that their data was secure. As they move that data from pieces of paper into their PCs and then from PCs into servers and from servers into data centers, every step of the way we have thought about how it is that we can ensure that customer data is both kept private and is kept secure. So tell us a little bit more about how Microsoft architects its data center infrastructure. Where are these sure. data centers? Sure, you know, I, I'm not the engineer, so let me just put mm -hmm. the qualifier on that. But, mm -hmm. but what I do know is that we have um, about 100 data centers now in 40 different countries around the world. They comprise about 1 million servers. So our investment in data centers is quite substantial. When we think about where to locate a data center, we think about all kinds of things. We want to ensure that there is infrastructure capacity. We want to ensure there's lots of cheap energy. We want to ensure there's coolant. And we also want to ensure that it is a data center that we can manage and control in a way that ensures customer safety. When it comes to thinking about other things, very technical things, we want to ensure that we can manage latency so that we can ensure that the data is moved very quickly from the customer to the data center and back again. And so that's another one of the reasons why our data centers are located in so many places around the world. So last December, we made some commitments to our customers about what we're going to do with this data that they keep in data centers. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about those commitments. What did we promise? We promised a number of things in that six month ago time frame. Some of them we were doing and we were recommitting and doubling down a little bit more. First of all, we told our customers that we would not turn over their data unless there was a valid legal order to do so. And by valid legal order in the United States, we talk about a warrant or we talk about a subpoena, and we actually look at each request that comes in and we ensure that the warrant 
and or the subpoena is actually valid and within the scope of what's permitted. So most recently you might have heard about something we just call the warrant case. And that was a case in which the government served a warrant on us to deliver content, in this case for a consumer, but content that was located outside of the United States. We turned down that request because we believe that warrants apply only to the territories for information in the United States. And so we thought that that warrant was out of bounds, literally and figuratively, and we turned that down. So first of all, we will ensure that only valid orders or subpoenas are there before we turn over the data. The second thing is that we make commitments to our customers in our contracts in terms of how we manage the data and what we do. And if we are required to do so, we will notify the customer that that request has come in so that the customer has an opportunity to engage in whatever legal process is available to the customer. So we are very clear that we will not turn over data unless it's valid and unless you know it. You talked about a lot of good things that Microsoft is doing uh, with its commitments, but how will a customer, a Microsoft customer, or a partner working with Microsoft really know that their data is safe? There's, that's a really good question as well. There's a number of things we do to ensure that customer data is safe. Uh, I think that we are probably one of the leaders in the industry, if not the leader, in ensuring just from a security perspective that we meet the highest bars of certifications. So for example, we can say that we are compliant with various standards and regulations that our competitors cannot. We also are the only leading competitor in the cloud that can say that we comply with what's called the EU model clauses. And this is a, a set of clauses and standards that the European governments, 28 of them, have gotten together and said that they think that this is the highest bar. Microsoft meets those, and not only do we meet them in Europe, but we offer the same kinds of standards and compliance measures for our worldwide customers. That means essentially that in addition to the commitments we make around our data, we put in place things like physical security and monitoring the personnel who actually see the data and touch the data, keeping that down to as minimum amount as possible. So those are things we do for customers from a contractual point of view. We also do a couple of other things that are, that are well worth noting. We continue to try to advance the technology every way we can. And we've also said that we are going to improve our encryption, both for data that's in transit between the data centers and for data that is at rest at the data centers. And a third very important thing is what we generally call transparency. And by transparency, we mean two things. We mean, first of all, that we will, in order to really alleviate government's fears about what goes on with our source code, uh, we have created transparency centers in large government capitals around the world. In these instances, the government officials can come in, they can look at our Windows source code, and they can assure themselves that the code is secure. They needn't worry about trying to determine that unilaterally in some other independent way. The other part about transparency is we want to be able to tell our customers as much as we possibly can about government requests for information. So we've started to publish transparency reports where we really detail this information in a very, very precise way. For the last six months, there have been only five requests for data that belongs to our enterprise customers. And I notice, notice that I say data that belongs to our customers, because we think that the data does belong to the customer and to no one else. And for each of those five requests, we did not turn over the data because we pushed back under the appropriate legal regulations and we did not turn over the data in those only five requests in the last six months on the enterprise side. That's great. So Mary, are we going this uh, path alone, or are there others who are interested in these issues too? There are lots of people interested in these issues. It's hard to read any media today without uh, reading about a company who is raising some of these, these issues. With respect to things related to more transparency in the court so that we know what information is being asked for and how often it's being asked for, Microsoft has been a leader in that front in terms of asking for more transparency and going to court for more transparency. Yahoo has, Google has as well. So those three, the three of us, I think are aligned on that. And we're also aligned in a coalition that's recently been formed the Reform Government Surveillance Coalition, which really 
strives to surface this issue and other issues related to government surveillance. I guess the third thing I'd point to is the warrant case, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. We've really been grateful for the support of a number of others who are helping us to convince the court to see the issue in the way that we think it should be seen, which is that government needs to apply the same rules on paper as it does in the cloud. And we have a number of people who are writing amicus briefs for us, friends of the court, including AT&T, Cisco, Verizon, and a number of others. So those are three areas in which we have broad industry support for this really important work. So how does the public feel about these issues? Do we have any data on how America is looking at these things or people in other parts of the world? I think we think that the American public feels quite strong about the issues and quite uh, positive about our belief that people should have the same security and safety in the cloud as they do on paper. And we felt so strongly about it that over the course of the summer, we did a survey and in fact confirmed that 86% of our customers believe that the government should have to follow the same legal requirements in the cloud as they do on paper when it comes to asking for information. If you really think about this, there's lots of examples from the real world that can get you to where you want to be quickly in thinking about the topic. So for example, when Federal Express ships a package to you, it may well be probably won't be, but in a bad situation, Federal Express might, in, request, in response to a government request, have to tell you about their tracking numbers, but they will not open the contents of the envelope. Similarly, a bank, which has a safety deposit box, may well identify the names of people who have the boxes if they are required to by a government subpoena, but they are not themselves permitted or asked to open the contents of the safety deposit box. If you stay in a hotel room, the proprietor of the hotel may need to turn over to an investigator on valid request the name of the guest in the room, but cannot open the room itself without a search warrant that goes to that particular hotel guest. And we think all of those things should be the same. The analogies are the same. The concern really is that the, the laws in many of these areas on the internet uh, lag about 25 years behind where we are today. Many of the laws that we are enforcing today in order to protect customers were written in the 1986 and 1990 time frame before we really had lots and lots of cloud storage, before we had storage lockers. And so Microsoft is also very much in the forefront in advocating for change in the laws in the United States in particular, but in other places around the world too, so that we can ensure that in fact the same protections that apply on paper apply in digital form. Great. So tell me, what else can we expect from Microsoft in the coming years? I mean, this is something that's obviously going to go yeah. on for a while, these issues and uh, the concerns that you spoke about. What is Microsoft going to do in the future? Well, I think in general what I say is you can expect Microsoft to be steadfast in our commitment to our customers. And I think that really goes to three things. We want to ensure that our customers trust us. That means we're going to continue to make advances in encryption. We're going to continue to make advances in policy. We're going to continue to advocate to change the law. We will see, be steadfast in the position that customers own the data. And so from that perspective, you'll see us continue to evolve as customers need it. The kinds of things and contractual commitments that we might make will continue to ensure that we're meeting the standards that become nationally recognized in terms of the best practices for storage of the data. And we will continue to advocate for reform in the law. So essentially ensuring that we innovate, ensuring that we provide you all the contractual commitments that we can ensuring that we protect you with the law as it exists today and take it further to ensure that the law goes further in the digital world are all things that we're going to be doing in the future. Well, thank you so much, Mary. Mary Snap, Corporate Vice President and De Deputy General Counsel here at Microsoft. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary and David. We really appreciate your time today. You might be asking yourselves, what can you do to lend your voice to these important issues. Well, there is something you can do. You can go to www.voicesforinnovation.org and visit our email privacy statement of support page. On that page, you will learn more about this issue, get links to other resources, 
and most importantly, have the ability to sign your name and lend your support. Thank you again, Mary and David. Thank you everyone for watching this webisode, and we look forward to bringing you additional content in the future.